I just jumped out. So here's the rear bench. A um, little bit of cut there. The plywood on the back, it was completely soaked. Now you can see it's been sitting in a pasture long enough that it's got shit growing on it. But this should clean up pretty good. The wood. Yeah. It's actually, it, it's not bad. It's just flimsy. There's no support. So when that goes back down to the new floor, I can just kind of put some supports and better supports in there. I don't believe I'll have issues with that. That should be fine. Now, I'm thinking, just jumping way ahead here, I have a seam right here on the vinyl. What I might do, get some new vinyl, roll or sew the edge, and then um, literally just cover from right here to right here. And I can just staple it underneath to the, the good wood roll it around the back, staple it in there nice and tight, and actually maybe do like gray accents or something. Um, try and make her pop, then that will cover the, cover the tear. Um, a lot of scrubbing, gonna need a lot of scrubbing. But I'm thinking this should come around. And who knows, if this cleans up well enough and maybe I can live with that and I'll just pack some some silicone or something in there and just say screw it so we'll we'll see how it cleans up but get it all nice aired out dried out before i do any scrubbing so let's look at that yeah captain's chairs like i said these weigh a ton very waterlogged um they stink they smell uh, i'm honestly to me they're garbage so Probably gonna put them on Facebook Marketplace. Maybe somebody wants them. Get a couple dollars back on this project here. So, coming along. All right, skipped a little bit, <clears throat> but uh, the new floor is in. Uh, I've got, this is three quarter inch treated. I don't know if I said that before. Um, and the ski locker. Had to redo, I shouldn't say redo. Everything's been reinforced. I'll say it that way. Um, there's a good amount of treated plywood, or not plywood, treated two by fours, two by eight, whatnot, reinforcing stringers underneath. Yes, I removed the foam over here. Foam on the passenger side was dry. Stringers were good. So pretty much all the reinforcements, I shouldn't say. All the reinforcings over here, but I did add stuff reinforcing over there for screwing down the new deck. Um, so the ski locker has new vertical sides. Um, it's got a new piece in the back, back here. And then it's got, well, both sides, sorry, left and right. Um, then I've got that kind of sandwiches through the existing stringer and then there's two by fours that were buried on the back side of the stringer so that it kind of sandwiches the existing stringer, the new plywood and everything. And that's all glued in. Should be, should be decently strong. Again, reinforcing is not completely rebuilding. It's reinforcing. Um, I just have two pieces back here. So like you can see, I got Extra meat for screwing. The wood's a little discolored. Oh, there's my finger. Wood's a little discolored on top, but it actually, it was sturdy. So just adding meat for, adding meat for screwing. You can see the foam on the other side. Fuel door. I'll have, uh, I'll make a little trap. I got that cut out, so I'll have something that sets that in place. Everything will get carpeted. Um, I do need to make the bottom piece for the ski locker yet. That's gonna, I'll cut that to fit. That will be carpeted. Um, all the black in there, that's a like vehicle undercoating spray. Um, pretty much flex seal type stuff. Just kind of gives it a little cleaner look. So 
A little bit of carpet takeout yet. Some gluing and whatnot kind of work to finish things off on the deck. And then shortly we'll be ready for carpet. Um, it's crazy how in a week, how much this side dried out once you pull the foam out and get everything opened up, get all the, all the shit out of there. Um, I don't know why these boats aren't manufactured with weep holes and stringers and whatnot that gets everything to the bilge. To me, logically that makes sense, but I'm not the original engineer, so... Yeah, here we are. Nice sturdy deck. We'll uh, be coming back soon with some engine work. All the parts should be here next few days. We'll get the five liter running and we'll get that thing in here. This is, everything's unbolted, just gotta lift it out. But I wanted to work on the floor first. Um, few things I really wasn't paying attention right away I got the four barrel carb um, happy about that that that's gonna be going on my five liter on the v8 right away um, ordered pretty much everything to address any mechanical fixing or updates on this boat for its age uh, being 31 years old this year new gimbal bearing that'll get all aligned when the new engine gets put in Lower shift cables getting replaced. I don't even know if this one's good, bad, ugly, anything, but I figured since it was all open, I'm gonna redo it. Distributor, coil, plugs, plug wires, um, thermostat. What else? All the manifolds will be brand new. Um, oh, water impeller. So pretty much all the normal boat maintenance items are going to be tackled in one shot here. I think one of the last few things I need to order or pick up at the auto parts store is the correct V-belt for the to run the alternator. Um, hopefully that works. Uh, oh, the hour meter was hiding back here. I got it tucked up, but... Boat had about 360 hours on it before she before she met her dis, demise with some frozen weather. But coming around, I'm hoping two weeks. Should have it on the water in two weeks. Um, got new captain's chairs ordered. Those should be here this week. Uh, I got new pedestals, so it's actually going to be a little higher. Um, the rear bench. I don't remember if I pointed out any anything on the rear bench. I got a little bit of, I got some ideas in my head on what I can do with the rear bench. Um, the front seats up there. I might be addressing those this winter, this coming winter. But we'll see. Oh, biggest thing. Got a new radio coming. So it's coming around. Okay, checking back in. Uh, made a little progress, I think, since I last recorded. All the carpet's glued down. Everything's form fit, cut around the ski locker. Um, you might notice behind the side panel and underneath now, I kind of have that color matched. And if we zoom in, some might laugh, but a little spray paint to color match as close as I could get. And uh, don't mind the dirty carpets, those will be cleaned. But in the grand scheme of things, there's really no direct contact or anything with that carpet back there. So underneath, so I've just got it, yeah, to match as best I could with the least amount of input because I didn't feel like really ripping off side panels. Um, I mean, I am going to wash them, but just making it easier on myself, hopefully, for now. One new captain's chair showed up. 
Uh, still one more coming like that. So that's just kind of placed in here. I was seeing how the height and everything of the pedestal works and it's actually gonna be perfect. Absolutely perfect once it's in place. Um, those were like pontoon style captain's chairs. Uh, engine still has to come out. One exhaust manifold showed up for the V8, one hasn't. So just waiting on some parts. Ended up, there's a little debacle going on with who I ordered what, the manifolds through. So working on a refund for the one that has no shipping information for the last 10 days. And I ended up, I ordered a third manifold from a different source, just so that they say they could have it to me in two days. So gonna have a manifold here. Get the engine running. Uh, I still have two pieces to put in in the back here. Coming around. No gimbal bearing is in. Um, so once the engine gets swapped, then I can throw the leg back on. But um, Speakers, those are getting swapped out, so don't mind those right now. But uh, zooming in, I mean, during the daylight, that'll be kind of shadowed, I'd assume, and whatnot. You'll have some stuff in there, so I don't believe, I mean, actually, but to the naked eye, it, it looks fairly close. So, I don't know, zoom back out and whatever. Uh, ordered up a GPS speedometer for this, because why not? Um... Again, this side here, I'm just bouncing around here. This side, got to wash all the side panels. Uh, getting close. Pretty much everything now on the inside. Well, I got a new radio. I, I did splurge and spent 16 or $17. Um, once that shows up, then a uh, little bit of wiring. A little bit of cleaning, mount the seats, get the engine swapped. I'm, I'm getting closer, getting closer, count and gone. Got a new shift cable, lower shift cable I got to swap in when the engine's out so I can route that. Oh, uh, what else? Gimbal bearing, prop, water pump. I got to do the impeller, got to do the impeller. So, a lot of small items now. Okay, so here we are. There's a motor in the air. The Empty engine compartment. Had to add a little clearance. Had to flatten the tires. And I got a ratchet strap pulling the engine back to lift up the sump side of the oil pan. But uh, I've got a two by six beam. There's five two by sixes there spanning five of my trusses. So that's how, uh, and then a, just a one ton chain fall that's how I lifted this baby out. Um, quick note, I guess things that I didn't think of, um, or whatever. Power steering pump, that's laying over there. Um, didn't think about unhooking lines and whatever at first, and then um, kind of just got a little bit creative. Um, that's your main water inlet there. Unhook that one. There's a ground on the bell housing that goes to the transom, to the uh, gimbal housing. Got to unhook that one. Um, otherwise, realistically, pretty, pretty straightforward to unbolt the motor and lift it up. Um, my limited to zero experience on this... Just take your time, take your time, um, maybe lift a little bit, see what you can do. Actually, that's what I had to do. I had to lift a little bit to get, um, oh, to get the, one of the power steering lines. The hose clamp was tipped in the wrong direction and it was behind the motor mount. Um, so I got that all situated. Um, up in the air, sorry. I meant got it situated when it was, I don't know, about two inches up. Um, take your time. This one, so like now here, let me zoom. I did not 
unbolt the motor mounts there. I took the top nuts off and I tried lifting straight up. Um, just again, limited experience. First time doing this. If you pull a motor this way, I would say don't side load or pull, make, make sure there's no load on those motor mounts. You don't want to wreck um, any of the meat that they, that they bolt into. Um, now with the V8 going in here, those are gonna get unbolted. Oh, I don't know where I stopped there. Uh, motor mounts, when the V8 gets installed, those are gonna get unbolted here. There and there, those four. I will have those connected to the motor mount on the engine that's hiding there. And then once the rear two motor mount bolts are in, locating where the motor, motor needs to sit, which is gonna move with the V8 being longer, gonna move those forward to here. I will know where those need to be um, drilled into. So those are getting removed with the engine out and those will be attached to the engine for reinstall. Um, other items here, I guess, good time to check your flappers. These look uh, pretty good shape. You can tell I got a little bit of cleanup to do in the back here that I wanted the engine out of the way for. Um, yeah, going back, like I said before, just take your time. Uh, nothing here seems like rocket science. It's pretty straightforward on, you know, maybe what can be left in place and what can come out. And so, yeah.